Upgrades and improvements for the off-grid rainwater system. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on the off-grid rainwater collection system and making a couple of small but important improvements. I started out by moving the IBC tote using a set of pallet forks on a Massey Ferguson subcompact tractor. The forks in the tractor make it a breeze to move heavy and bulky items. Other than the normal maintenance for cleaning the first flush filter tank and an occasional paint touch-up, it's been a few years since I've had to do any real maintenance to the system. This past winter I forgot to remove the filter and ball from the first flush diverter system. Unfortunately, both items were damaged beyond repair. This mishap was not all bad news as I had been thinking about upgrading to the newer Rain Harvesting Advanced Release Valve. The new valve and components should make for easier maintenance and less issues, especially with clogged flow control valves as on the old system. The Advanced Release Valve connects to the old first flush chamber area, making for a seamless upgrade. If you are unfamiliar with the first flush diverter system, this equipment diverts the initial rainwater and pollutants that first come off the roof when it starts raining. Having moved the IBC tilt, I now have some additional space to work on the system. The new control valve consists of two knobs that control the flow of water. The right knob sets the release time and how fast you would like the first flush to empty. The left knob controls a reset of the valve based on the number of days or weeks as determined by the user. This is useful if you want to make sure no water is left in the first flush pipe assuring that all water is released. This helps eliminate bacteria and other harmful contaminants that can pollute a rainwater collection system. The interval times in the new valve are based on the size of your first flush system. My first flush diverter pipe is pretty small so the 5 minute setting should work well. Depending on the system's size and desired results, a longer reset interval will mean that the first flush diverter chamber empties less frequently, leading to a higher rainwater yield. A short reset interval will mean that the first flush diversion chamber empties more frequently, resulting in a lower water yield. Be sure to use Teflon tape to help eliminate any leaks when putting all of the components together. After connecting, I filled the first flush pipe to test the valve. This system should offer significant improvement from the old system. As I previously moved the IBC tote with the pallet forks, I ended up giving the entire system a good clean out with our pressure washer. As you can see, some sediment still gets through the first flush system and in this case was clogging up our hose valve. After getting things cleaned out, we were back in business and ready to reassemble the system. Installing a new cover is a good upgrade which will save time from having to paint the IBC tote. I still did a few touch ups on the top of the IBC tote where the new cover does not reach. I did have to make a couple of holes in the newer cover to accommodate the zip ties. A few years back when I originally installed the off-grid rainwater system, IBC tote covers were hard to find and very expensive. With the popularity of IBC totes on rainwater projects, covers are readily available and inexpensive. I'll leave an affiliate link below to the IBC tote cover as well as other items in this video. Affiliate links do not increase the cost of items and help support my channel and future videos. With everything just about back together, it was time to move the IBC tote to its original position. After making the final connections, rain arrived a few days later and all was working well. I'm looking forward to the ease of use with the new advanced release valve as this is a nice upgrade to the existing system. Thanks for watching. Please comment if you have any questions or thoughts on the system below. Take care and have a great day.